All right. Well, man, I had the tag team duo from Ridge in the store the other day, and I guess that's how they do it there, man. We had their, our sales guy uh, from Ridge Vineyards, Michael Torino, from the, the uh, Eastern Regional section, and then uh, one of the winemakers. I guess they have three facilities at Ridge, so this gentleman um, was uh, John Oley, and he worked at the Lytton Springs facility, so uh, in charge of the Zinfandel, I would guess. And I'll never forget the dinner that we did at Cafe Max with Paul Draper. Paul, one of the legends in California winemaking. He's been making wine at Ridge since 1968. And just to gleam some intelligence from this guy, sit across the table from him for two or three hours and listen to the history of California wine unfold uh, was a real wonderful evening. And uh, I'll never forget it. Some beautiful wines also. We had a vertical of Ridge Montebello that night. And uh, hey... We had two bottles of Montebello brought to, Brown, brought to Brown Bag a few weeks ago, the 99 and the 2000, both of which were fabulous. All right, well, we started out with a Chardonnay, and they've changed the package a little bit on Ridge. You know, all the wines used to say California on them, oh, this, like this one here. But that's a little bit confusing to most folks because that would indicate it's a cheap wine made with a California appellation. But since Ridge has got three different facilities and they make wine, you know, from different areas, they wanted to... I think promote that they're all in California. I don't know. But anyways, they've cleaned up the labels. They put the appellations a little more clearly on there. The Chardonnay from the Santa Cruz Mountains, one of the best examples of Chardonnay there, I think, and made in a more racy style. Very clean bouquet, pear, and apple, 1,600-foot elevation. Um, so just one vineyard, single vineyard that they have dedicated to Chardonnay up there. Notes of lightly toasted spice, fresh-baked apple, a little bit of cinnamon there as well. Nicely balanced on the palate with that ripe tree fruit, but firm acidity, uh, holding everything together, and a nice hint of oak spice on the finish. An excellent Chardonnay. I think it was number two in the Wine Spectator a few years ago. The Zinfandel, one of the things these guys are known for, the East Bench from Dry Creek Valley. This wine's 100% Zinfandel, which is not one of the things these guys are known for. Usually, uh, they blend in a little Petit Sirac, Carignan, or some other things in with their Zinfandel, which is what I think makes Ridge Zinfandel a bit more complex and a bit more age-worthy than most of the Zinfandels that you'll find from California. Well, this wine um, was made for the first time in 2006, and uh, pretty dry cherry fruit here, spice prunes, fresh flowers, uh, fresh and fruity on the tongue, um, a lot of that nice fruit showing through, uh, smooth tannins, short but very pleasant, and nice freshness for a Zinfandel. One of the things that I'm very critical of, Zinfandels can be a little heavy and a little alcoholic, but not the ones from Ridge. 2008 Ridge Ponzo Vineyard from the Russian River. You used to see a lot of Zinfandel growing in the Russian River, but I think that territory has been switched over to Pinot Noir for the most part after the sideways effect. But uh, Zinfandel has this nice briary character to it. You get that in this Ponzo Vineyard. Some dried black cherry fruit, dark cocoa, sweet tobacco spice, black raspberry jam-like fruit. Brambly note showing through on the palate also. A little bit of jamminess here in this wine, but a nice savory note again coming in to save the day at the end. Uh, very good Zinfandel. And then the Litton Springs. This has been one of my favorite Zinfandels of all time coming out of California. And this wine has 21% Petite Syrah and Carignan added to the blend, which kind of Petit Syrah kicks it up a notch, a pretty tannic, pretty big and bold varietal, that black, brambly black cherry liqueur-like fruit shown on the nose with some licorice spice, a potpourri of dried flowers, and a really nice bottle of Zinfandel, somewhat complex, and even got some good length on the finish. Really excellent juice. That's my favorite Zin of the day, no secret there. The York Creek up next. Uh, this wine's a blend of 21 Petit Syrah and big blackberry jam on the, on the nose with the Fresh flowers and black pepper spice, uh, really exotic soy and cocoa showing there also. Oh, maybe this was my favorite. I'm sorry, looking through my notes again. I must have forgot. Wow, nice amount of structure on the palate. Fine tans at, tannins and that lovely blueberry and blackberry fruit showing. Really nice and fresh and a potpourri of spice and floral notes on the finish. Excellent. And hey, the big boy, Montebello. This is one legendary wine from the Santa Cruz Mountains. This wine was picked first place in the second Judgment of Paris when they said, hey, could these California wines win again against these French wines? And let's try it again. And guess who came in first place? Ridge Montebello, I forget the vineyard, the, the vintage, but uh, always a great wine. This 2007 has got a little bit of Merlot, Petit Verdot, and Cabernet Franc in it. 
They don't always use Cabernet Franc because it can be very difficult to get ripe at that high elevation. But when it does get ripe in a vintage like 2007, man, it adds a little something special to the blend that when it doesn't have it, it's just not the same. So a lot of fresh plowed earth, black, uh, uh, black earth, black spice, notes of toasty oak, dried tobacco, espresso, soy, very complex bouquet. Big and chewy on the tongue with firm tannins. This wine definitely needs a little time. Lots of concentration, lots of depth. The echoing, that nuance in the nose through the finish. A big wine, most excellent plus, man. Killer juice from the guys at Ridge. All right, hey, believe it or not, we're still drinking here, folks. We've got the Chateau Mouton Rothschild tasting coming up next.